Hey guys, welcome back to my Age of Empires 2 Unity Illusion Guide with me, NK that Striker Nathan. And yes, it has been a very long time since I have posted my previous Age of Empires 2 Unity Evolution Guide video, which was about the hand cannoneers. And I do apologize for that, it's just that these guys take so long to create, and I don't really have all that time, um, and really, I don't really have all that effort to create all of this, because these videos take a very long time to create, and yeah, that's basically it. But for now, the Light Cavalry Unity Evolution Line Guide has been completed, and here we go. The importance of scouting was always very essential to medieval armies. Acquiring the information about the locations of your enemy was an invaluable advantage, as they will be able to prepare once the message has been received. As a result, armies built around heavy knights always maintained a force of scout cavalry. These scouts were lightly armed and armoured, and only rode on horses that were bred entirely for speed and stamina. Due to their unmatched pace, they were used for a variety of tasks, such as reconnaissance missions, raiding and skirmishing. In-game, the three Light Cavalry units, the Scout Cavalry, the Light Cavalry and the Hussar, are created in a stable and are classified as Light Cavalry or Scout Cavalry. This means that they have relatively low hit points and low damage compared to other cavalry. However, being the primary and default scout unit for many civilizations when starting off a game, scouts excel at scouting. They have a very long line of sight which increases as you research and upgrade scout cavalry into light cavalry and into hussars. Due to their weak melee strength, scouts are one of the three so-called trash units because they cost 80 food and no gold at all to produce. In addition to scouting, these light cavalry are quite effective against archers and siege weapons. Their high speed means that they can reach a ranged target from a crossbow to a scorpion very fast and ranged units do not stand much chance when there are melee units fighting in close quarters. Scouts are also one of the two only military units a player can start with in a new game. In the Dark Age, players start with a one scout if they are not playing as a Mesoamerican civilization. They have 45 HP, 3 attack, 2 pierce armor, but no armor, making them very vulnerable to any melee unit. In the first seconds of your game, you should start scouting around your town center to look for your starting resources, such as your gold pile, berries, wild boar, and your wood. Afterwards, send your scout cavalry to scout around until you find the enemy base. You can try to disrupt their eco by attacking villagers, but also be careful. Multiple villagers can work together to bring your scout down, and a single villager without loom can defeat a scout cavalry. Ideally, you should try to pick a fight with only one villager at a time if possible. Scouts are available for creation in the Feudal Age from the stable. Immediately after the Feudal Age advancement is completed, scouts will also automatically gain plus 2 attack and a slight speed boost as well. Therefore, scouts will have a total of 5 attack instead. In this age, scouts can be produced although 80 food is a high cost in the Feudal Age, and committing to a scout army will seriously delay your Castle Age time. Do remember that the cost for 10 scouts is the same as the food cost for the Castle Age research. You will also need many farmers and many lumberjacks to maintain scout production efficiently. Unless you do attempt to continue to push into your opponent's base in the Feudal Age, this strategy is not really recommended for a number of reasons. Firstly, a fully walled base would take a long time to break through with scouts, and this will mean there is enough time for villagers to build towers to defend themselves from. But once you do break in, they may already be in the castle age, where knights will be too powerful for scouts to handle. If they are still in feudal, spearmen will be the preferred counter, as they are the ultimate cavalry bane. A small group of these guys is able to defeat a horde of scouts in mere seconds. If you still prefer to push in in the Feudal Age with scouts, it will be unwise not to research technologies and upgrades for them. In the stable, Bloodlines is a must. Increasing the scout cavalry's measly health by plus 20 hit points to 265 HP is very important, especially considering the technology's very cheap price. In a blacksmith, scouts benefit from forging, giving plus 1 attack, and scale barding armor, giving plus 1 armor and plus 1 pierce armor. 
In the Cost Wage, Scout Cavalry can be upgraded to Light Cavalry by researching the Light Cavalry upgrade. This costs 200 food and 100 gold, and it is only unavailable to, of course, the Aztecs, Mayans, and also the Teutons. The Turks also receive the upgrade for free upon reaching this age. Light Cavalry have exceptionally long lines of sight, making them a very viable scout unit. They have 60 HP or 80 HP if bloodlines have been researched, 7 attack and 2 pierce armor. Light Cavalry are super great against siege weapons and archers because they have a speed and attack to deal with them very effectively and they are also much cheaper than knights. Additionally, Light Cavalry have attack bonuses against monks as well as being very resistant to conversions. Husbandry allows them to be even better, granting that extra 10% increase in movement speed. This technology is critical for an army that relies on speed to overwhelm the enemy rapidly without taking many casualties. Being fairly cheap to produce, light cavalry can be massed up pretty quickly and easily, although this decision to go heavily on light cavalry will be influenced by what your opponent's army composition is. For example, if they're producing knights, which are very common in multiplayer matches, then light cavalry will not be an effective counter. On the other hand, crossbowmen should be easier to defeat unless they are microed extraordinarily well to avoid taking too much damage. The cast wage upgrades for light cavalry are as follows. Iron casting for a further plus one attack, and chain barding armor for a further plus one armor, and plus one pierce armor. Once the player reaches Imperial, the Hazard upgrade can be researched, unless you are playing as the Britons, Chinese, Franks, Japanese, Teutons, or the Vikings. As with the Light Cavalry upgrade, the Turks Light Cavalry are automatically upgraded for free, which means that they do not need to spend 500 food and 600 gold on this upgrade. Hazards have 75 HP, or 95 HP if Bloodlines have been researched. Their attack is still at 7 though. Although there may not look like much difference at all between Light Cavalry and Hazards, they do have some subtle bonuses that is not displayed in game. While the attacking cooldown for Light Cavalry was 2, for Hazards this has been decreased ever so slightly to 9.1, meaning they do attack faster by a minute margin. This can be a saver sometimes. In addition, Hazards have 12 attack against monks, compared to Light Cavalry's 10. In the Imperial Age, Hazards can make an excellent base storming unit. Their decent attack and fast speed will ensure a good raid on any unsuspecting economy. You should try to avoid engagements with other cavalry, like paladins or camels, as they are vastly superior in terms of their power. However, targeting skirmishes, monks and siege will almost always result in a win. If you are short of gold, creating hazards is definitely a good choice. By this time in Imperial, you should have many farms to produce a lot of food. Hazards can be great to strike into the heart of an opponent's economy, and because they only cost food, they can be massed up fairly quickly and easily. With the Imperial Age upgrade, Blast Furnace and Plate Binding Armor, Hazards will gain a further plus 2 attack and plus 1 armor and plus 2 pierce armor. So what would be the best civilization to play as for a light cavalry rush? Well, this would be the Mongols. As part of their bonus as a civilization, the light cavalry will have 30% more HP. This means that in the castle wage, the upgrade to the light cavalry will increase HP to 78 or 98 if bloodlines is researched. In the imperial age, the hazard upgrades will see the hazards having 117 HP if bloodlines is researched. Mongols have all the blacksmith upgrades for the light cavalry available with the exception of the plate barding armor although this extra health is more beneficial than the upgrade. A fully upgraded Mongol Hazar will just about win against a fully upgraded Hazar of a civilization with all the standard cavalry upgrades but no additional bonuses. Mongol Hunters also work 50% faster, granting that advantage in producing food quicker to support the production of scouts. And finally, just to top it all off, Light Cavalry have plus 2 line of sight to increase the amount of area they can scout. The Light Cavalry is a rather versatile unit with a good number of advantages. Its long line of sight makes it the only a unit capable of scouting the map for everything you need, including resources, relics and the location of your enemy's town centre. They have a very high speed, complementing their scouting abilities as this will allow your scouts to reach further faster. 
being a trash unit, only wood and food is needed to produce this unit so they can be massed up quickly and easily. However, being a cavalry unit, the usual anti-cavalry banes do apply. The Spearman Evolution line will utterly devastate them, as well as camels and heavy camels. Their relatively low health and damage means that you should not try to face heavy cavalry either, unless you have the sheer numbers advantage. The Light Cavalry Unity Evolution line has a variety of purposes, much like its real life counterpart a thousand years ago. In the early moments of the Dark Age, scouting is crucial to find all the resources you need to produce a good economy. You will always need to rely on your scout to capture the sheep scattered around the town centre, and scouts can be created in the feudal age as well, and can work wonders against the opponent's base if your economy can support a unit that costs 80 food to produce. The Castle Wage sees the Light Cavalry, a much improved unit with better hit points and attack. Acting as a support role in conjunction with other types of units is a good idea, although an army of hussars alone can still be pretty useful when sneaking behind the lines to infiltrate the soft underbelly of your enemy's base. Should you find your hussars under threat from more superior forces, hussars can ride away easily. Do not fear, there is no need to pack at all. Because there's always light at the end of the tunnel. This has been Anchor Striker Nathan. Join me next time when I'll be looking at the unit evolution line of the night.